In this concept, we're learning about al algebraic properties and proofs. Um, so at the top is a chart of algebraic properties. Um, there are examples um, using variables, so just rules in general, and then examples with actually um, some numbers filled in to help you see. Um, so the addition property, if we add the same thing to both sides, the equation's still equal. Um, so for example, if we have x minus 4 equals b, just some number, uh, we can add 4 to both sides and the equation is still equal, x equals b plus 4. Notice here 4 plus negative 4 would be 0, so that's why this side's just x. So these are familiar, these are properties you should be familiar with, these are properties you've used learning um, to solve uh, algebraic equations in Algebra 1. Um, a couple that may not be so familiar to you are these three. They would be worth your time to memorize. Uh, the transitive property, one way I think about it is it starts with a T, like the word three. So the transitive property always has three parts. So notice the three parts are if A equals B is part one, and B equals C is part two, then A equals C. Um, so the transitive property, we're basically saying if two things are equal to the same thing, they must be equal to each other. For example, if x equals 7 and x equals y, then 7 must equal y. Um, similarly, the reflexive property, um, it doesn't have three parts like the transitive property. It's more like looking at your reflection in a mirror. You're going to see the exact same thing. So if a equals a, then a still equals a. If x equals x, x still equals x. It seems kind of silly when we think about algebra. When we get into some of the ge uh, geometry properties, um, looking at segments and stuff that way, it becomes helpful. And then lastly is the symmetric property. Um, the symmetric property, uh, I think of like butterflies have symmetry, so you'll see the same thing on both sides of a butterfly. That's a horrible butterfly. Um, but you'll see some sort of pattern they have, um, you know, maybe if they have triangles out on the outside of their wing and a circle closer to their wings or something. So. Uh, the example of a equals b, then b equals a, or if 9 equals x, then x equals 9. Um, so unlike the reflexive property where it's saying the exact same thing, the symmetric property is kind of repeating itself, um, but the similar parts match up. Notice a is on the outside of both of these, b is on the inside of both of these. If a equals b, then b equals a. Um, so take a minute. Uh, pause this video and look over this chart, make sure these are all ones you're familiar with. Um, and then we're going to go through some examples of when we would use these. So uh, in this first example it says, if 3x equals 9 plus 27y, then x equals 3 plus 9y. It's asking us to identify which property is being shown. Well if you'll notice the second equation is just the first equation all being divided by 3. So that means this must be the division property. That's all we have to do. On number 2, we have 8x equals 12, then 8x plus 5 equals 17. Well, since 17 is 12 plus 5, all we did was add 5 to both sides. Since we're adding on both sides, this is the addition property. Number three, if 2x plus 1 equals 3x plus 5x, then 2x plus 1 equals 8x. So notice 3x plus 5x equals 8x here. We're not adding something to both sides, we're simply just um, combining our like terms here. 3x plus 5x equals 8x. So we're substituting in what we know. We know that 3x plus 5x equals 8x, so we're using the substitution property to say Okay, we can substitute in 3x plus 5x is the same as just saying 8x. Number 4, x plus 4 equals 9, then 9 equals x plus 4. That's a symmetric property. Um, it's the same on both sides, just repeated frontwards to backwards. Or um, Again, I... Um, okay, symmetric property. Notice the reflection property would just say if x plus 4 equals 9, x, then x plus 4 equals 9. So since we switched the order around, it's the symmetric property. Alright, number 5. If x equals a and x equals b, then a must equal b. That's a transitive property. Notice we have three parts there. 
the first two are equal to the same thing. They're both equal to x, so they must be equal to each other. That's what the third part is telling us. A must be equal to B. All right, now the next section asks us to um, look at some examples and figure out why it's not an example of a certain property. So number six says if x, sorry, if eight plus two equals x, then 10 equals x. And it asks, why is this an example of the substitution property, not addition property? Well, if we go back up here and look at the difference, the addition property, we're adding something to both sides of the equation, whereas the substitution property, we're substituting in something we know is true into the next equation. So if we look here, we're not adding two to both sides of our equation. We're simply substituting in the fact that we know 8 plus 2 is 10. So uh, we're just changing that to say 10 instead. Alright, so I just wrote, we're not adding something to both sides, we're just substituting, because we know 8 plus 2 equals 10, we're substituting that in. Alright, on number 7, it says if 2x equals 8 times 4, then 2x equals 32. It says again, why is this an example of the substitution property and not multiplication? Well, similar to the previous example, we're not multiplying on both sides. We are simply substituting in that we know 32 is what 8 times 4 equals. All right, number 5, if 5x plus 1, or sorry, that's number 8. If 5x plus 1 equals 9, 5x equals 8. It says, why is this an example of the subtraction property? So notice it says it is an example of the subtraction property. We're not substituting in that this equals 8. We're subtracting 1 from both sides to get, whoops, sorry, 9 minus 1 is 8, 5x plus 1 minus 1 would just leave us with 5x. So it's an example of the subtraction property because we are subtracting from both sides. Specifically, we're subtracting the same thing from both sides. All right, number nine says write an example of the division property as a conditional statement. There's several examples you could uh, come up with. Here's one I said, if 2x equals 16, then x must equal 8. I can get that by dividing both sides by 2, so that's the division property. Number 10, an example of the symmetric property is if x equals 3, then 3 must equal x. Symmetry, it's the same on both sides. Um, it's saying the same thing, it's just frontwards to backwards. Number 11 says finish the conditional property using the addition property. So if x equals 9, then x plus 4 equals, well, since we added 4 to the left side, we have to add 4 to the right side. 9 plus 4 is 13. So our statement would say if x equals 9, then x plus 4 equals 13. Whoops, I just realized it's not showing. Um, okay, number 12. The distributive property, if we distribute this, says if 4 times 2 minus x, then we have 4 times 2 is 8, minus uh, 4 times x would be 4x. And lastly, it says if 8x plus 2x equals 5 plus 1, then 10x equals 6. It says can x plus 2, 2x be changed into 10x, and can 5 plus 1 be changed into 6 in the same step in a proof. Now we haven't talked about proofs yet, um, but basically what it's asking is, is the same property being used? Well notice here that we are um, we are using the substitution property to say 8x plus 2x equals 10x. We're also using the substitution property to say 5 plus 1 equals 6. So because we're using the same property, we can do this in the same step. And again, that property was the substitution property. Whoops. 
All right, so there's some examples over algebraic properties.